in this workshop we're going to do some basic workflow exercises we're going to open a plan in AutoCAD we're going to insert a plan in AutoCAD we're then going to print it and export it then we're going to do a bit of post-production in GIMP and then from GIMP we're going to export two images and then we're going to do the final workflow in Inkscape this is an introduction that we're going to be using all three applications and I'm just trying to highlight to this workshop what each one does and what we're going to use these tools for. Okay, first thing you need to do, you're all going to get access to the template. So what we need to do is you need to start a new project and you need to go and use a template. So basically, I'm just going to up up Teams. I'm going to show you where to go and get the information. So in Teams, okay, you're 200. This information will be available on ClickUp as well, but I'm just highlighting where you can get a lot of information. You're going to go to BIM Library. In BIM Library, you're going to go to AutoCAD. Remember, he has a whole lot of useful information you can download, but we're going to go to Templates. And I want you to download this OKU DWT file. So here, I'm going to download this. Download it. Okay, so I'm going to go and open this in its location. So it would be in Downloads. I'm going to cut that. And I'm going to put this in a location where I can use it again and again. We will exercise how to do this correctly, but for now, for this exercise, download it and have it handy. So on desktop, I've got a workshop folder. I'm going to paste this information in here. Good. Now, once I've got my template file, I'm going to start a new drawing. So I'm going to go new. I'm going to say get more templates or browse templates in this location, desktop. I'm going to go to workshops and I'm going to go and get this file. So basically I'm starting a new drawing driven by this template file. So I'm going to press open. Once the drawing's open, you should all have the same view as you seeing in my screen. Please bear in note, if you go to explore the template file, this is what you're getting in the template file. So a lot of this information is preset and pre-built. So like dimension styles, annotation styles, line weights, layers for example so all your layers are pre-built we're going to start we'll work through how this works exactly but today's exercise is just to kind of get you familiar familiar with the workflows we're going to be using this year okay so basically you can leave everything as is the next step i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the view tab and you'll see there's an icon that you're going to open it's called external references palette or you can simply type xref you'll see it'll close it you type xref okay but in essence i want this open okay if i close this and i type in xref that will reopen this palette okay then i'm going to simply use the attach attach dwg this was similar to how we imported images and scale them so i'm going to go attach dwg now i'm going to go i'm going to give you all these files so you're going to access these files like i'm going to access the information okay so basically OneDrive, you can download this information. Remember, you're going to have this available. I'm just going to show you where my information is. Okay, so basically, I'm going to link this file in. So I'm going to go open. So in essence, I'm importing another DWG file into my new project that I've created. This is drawing one. Remember, we, this is driven by the template. So I'm going to go and link this in. So I'm going to go there we go good now you leave everything as per mine you don't specify you can specify but we want this to come in close to our origin I'll explain later why everything else remains the same make sure that this is millimeters but it should all be the same okay if not please just alert me that that was incorrect okay so if this is not millimeters what you need to do is you need to type in units And make sure that you insert and scale you can make it unit list for now I'll explain so let's do that again attach DWG open good so you should be seeing exactly what I'm seeing currently okay everything should be exactly as it is I'm gonna press ok what this will do it will import will insert this drawing file that I've given you into this new project file okay 
You'll see that it'll gray it out. If it does so, it means that it's, it's locked and it's a block reference. So we'll need to fix that. So we need to open up our Xrefs again. We need to right click on Xrefs and we need to say bind. And we're gonna say insert. So what this will do, it will make it part of this drawing now. So in essence, it was a link to another drawing. Now it's part of this drawing. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this because it's still a block in essence. If you go to view again and you open up your properties, it'll tell you that it's a block reference. Then you're gonna to go to the home tab and then here on the home tab, under the modifier tab or panel, we're gonna go and explode everything. Okay, now we can start accessing the layers. We're not gonna to do too much. I just wanna familiarize yourself, familiarize all of you with what we're going to use drawings for and what type of drawings we're going to start producing. Okay, you can see this is a plan and section. So in essence, if I cut a line through the middle of this and I projected it up using these construction lines, you should start being able to produce a section. Okay, so this is section and elevation. So we're seeing some information in the background. Okay, this is water, planting. Anyway, now in the layers tab, I'm going to go to the construction layer and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to enable this do not print function so that the construction lines don't print. Remember whatever anything I select on is construction. This is a construction layer. Okay so if I press if I go to view and I go to properties again remember control one on your keyboard will open this properties dialog box. You can see that this is on the construction layer. Okay look you can also delete them. That's up to you. Keep them there because we're gonna we're gonna go through these concepts okay okay pretty straightforward next thing I wanted you to do is at the bottom of your view here you should have a model and an a1 tab basically this is model space and the rest of these tabs at the bottom here will be paper space so technically this is an a1 sheet okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything on my a1 sheet I'm gonna delete it then I'm gonna right click on this tab at the bottom here, this A1 tab, and I'm gonna to go to Page Setup Manager, and I'm gonna create a whole new page setup. Okay, so basically, these are page setups, and this is a paper space, or paper, or it's a sheet in essence. You can apply any of these settings to the current page. So let me, re let me rename this and explain this a bit better. So if I go to rename I'm going to change this to sheet just so it makes more sense so right click and I go to page setup manager now you see that this is sheet with which is driven by my a1 page setup so I'm going to make a whole new page setup I'm going to call this a4 a4 because I want to print an a4 sheet Great, you can leave all the settings the same. This is what's great about the template. It removes a lot of this additional work that you would have to do in order to print correctly. So a lot of this is pre-set up, so pen styles, and that's something we're gonna explain a lot more. But in essence, all that you have to do, you're gonna change nothing. The only thing that you will change in this instance is the page size. So we want this to be a, a landscape sheet and I'm going to leave everything as it is so it's an A4 full bleed everything else the same I'm going to press OK then I'm going to double click on A4 and you'll see now that it will apply this page style or this plot style to my sheet so I'm going to press close now technically if I measured this it's an A4 sheet the next thing I need to do is in layout we need to create a new viewport okay you follow exactly what I'm doing here in layers, I'm gonna go and hit V on my keyboard while I'm scrolling through. You'll see it'll jump down to viewports. I'm gonna make this my active layer. Then I'm gonna click on this layout tab. Please note that this layout tab will not be visible in model space. You'll notice it'll disappear. However, once you're in a sheet or a layout, you see that this tab is active and I'm gonna create a whole new rectangle viewport. Now in essence, all that I'm doing is I'm creating a portal where think of it as a you taking you taking a sheet and you're taking your magnifying glass and you're zooming in on model space so basically I'm taking a snapshot of model space like we did with our aerial photographs that we scaled 
I am going to go and pick a scale from the scale section here. If you don't have this active, please follow in my introduction video and switch on the information that's required. And here I'm going to go and change the scale 1 to 50 and you'll notice this will change. Then while you're in the viewport, remember if you double click the viewport active, is active, I'm going to press P for pan and I'm going to move the plan view in the middle of my screen. Then I'm going to press escape, escape and then I'm going to double click outside of the viewport. The next thing I am going to do is I'm going to select the viewport. So click and click again to select. So click, click. If you select in this direction, you'll notice that it's a solid line. It won't select anything that it crosses. However, if I click once and click again in the opposite direction, whatever that dashed line crosses, it will select. I'm going to right click and you'll see now that it'll give me some options when I select that. And I'm going to go viewport. Here you can say display locked. All that that does, if you double click and activate the viewport, you see that this icon has changed to locked. It means that the viewport is locked. Just means if I use my scroll button, my scroll wheel, I can't then change the zoom of this and it's exactly 1 to 50. Okay, don't worry, you'll get the hang of this. If you follow this video step by step, you should come right. I'm going to double click outside of the sheet again. And now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the size of this viewport. Now, please bear in mind that this viewport layer, if I go back to home, you'll notice if I go to layers, layer properties, this viewport layer never prints. So basically you'll see this rectangle here, but it'll never print. Likewise, we've changed the construction layers to do the same. So if I go back here, they don't print either. Okay, so once I've done that, and I've kind of set up, I just want this plan for now, so please follow the step by step. Once I've got this plan information, all I'm simply going to do now is go to the sheet again, right click, and you can hit the plot icon. Now, if there's some other information that appears, so let me use this print icon again. If you get other information that appears before the screen, I've deactivated that, but all you need to do is just say single plot only, not multiple plot. You'll notice you won't have to set up anything here because a lot of this information would have been preset because the template has driven a lot of this information. Anything that might be different, you might have to click on extends and you might have to say center plot. Okay, you can go to preview. Now, if you go to preview, this is typically what you're gonna see for the print. So this is a very basic layout. There's a couple steps, there's a bench. So that, okay, pretty straightforward. But this is just an exercise. Okay, you can press this exit button. You can press OK now to print and you can save this. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to save this in my workshop folder. So I'm going to call this A4, A4 plan. Okay, great. So I'm going to keep these files. I'm going to press save. Give this a couple seconds and it should open up a PDF that looks exactly like this. So technically you should have an A4 plan on the sheet. Great, so this part of the exercise is done. We can close AutoCAD for now. So close AutoCAD. Remember, you can save this project. So maybe let's just do that. So before you save, go File, Save As. It's advisable that you save constantly. Okay, that's very important with AutoCAD. Sometimes it does tend to crash. Okay, so I'm gonna save this as my plan. Good. So if I ever need to go back and change information, I'm going to do so in AutoCAD. So close AutoCAD for now.